Hi, and welcome to the 23rd video in our C Sharp for Beginners tutorial series. In the last video, we added some constructors to our class. So now we are able to create uh, instances our, of our employee class using our constructors and specifying a few parameters. We created two constructors, one uh, for only specifying the employee ID, and then one where we can specify the employee ID, first name, and last name. And then we've also, we still have our public method here for print info to display all the information that we have on our employee to the screen. Now, the only thing that we don't have is actual ability to modify the first name and last name because we have made these variables private. So we, today we're gonna to be looking at getters and setters for variables. So we're gonna be looking at a few different ways we can do this. Um, because there are multiple ways that we can actually do this. I'm just going to be going over uh, the best practice ones. Now, of course, you can create methods uh, to get the variable and set the variable as well. Those are pretty easy. I'm not going to be going over those methods, but instead we're going to be going over uh, some slightly different uh, methods that are a little bit more uh, simple and more recommended for C Sharp usage. Uh, so let's actually go ahead and let's get started with the employee ID. Now, in my mind, an employee ID is really only ever going to be a read-only variable. So we're going to see how we can make this private um, variable also be able to be read. Because right now, if I go here and say console dot uh, dot right line here and we say Richard dot I don't have an employee ID at all actually if I do Richard if we actually type it out correctly we don't actually have an employee ID here so we can't get that information so let's actually make that information available so we're going to actually do a public int employee ID with a capital uh, e here, because uh, it is actually going to be uh, a method or a member method. Uh, so we're going to do a public int employee ID, and then we're going to do a curly bracket. And as you can see, Visual Studio already wants to kind of auto complete it. This would be a standard get set, but because we want to do an employee ID as just something we want to be able to read from, uh, what we're going to do is going to do a get and then we're going to do a return employee ID. Oops. Employee ID. And then a uh, semicolon. And then we have the closing curly bracket. And then all we're going to do for now is we are going to do this um, curly bracket here. So we can actually just get the employee ID. So now if we actually save this. And we go to dot employee ID. We just do the semicolon at the end here. We can actually see when we run the application here, right before we print out our second employee, we actually just get that second employee ID um, right before we actually just print out all the info. So now we can actually access that employee ID. But now let's see if we actually try to change it. We can do uh, Richard here dot employee ID and then here you're going to see it just says get and then a semicolon and then nothing after it and that is because if we try to make that equal to four here we actually get an error and it's because it is assigned to read only so we can't assign anything to it now this could also potentially uh, be a problem right now um, but we do, haven't caused that problem because we still have that private int here. Uh, so we can actually still assign it. So that's a little bit confusing because what, at, what we will see later on was we actually don't need these variables here. But first, we're just going to go over some of the simpler examples. And uh, we're going to see a little bit more for that a little bit later on. So now let's do the same thing here for the first name. So let's do a public string uh, first name and this time we're going to do the get we are going to return the first name 
but we're also going to do a set open and closing curly bracket and we are going to say this dot first name equals value and the value is going to be the value that gets assigned after the equals sign so once we actually have that set here we can actually set the first name now let's go ahead and let's test out our application here so let's just remove this because we already know that actually we're going to leave that here and we're going to do another console dot right line and we're going to do a richard dot um, first name and we're going to display the first name and then what we're going to do right before we actually display all the info we're going to do a richard dot first name here and as you can see we have a get set so if we make that equal to, we are going to make the first name equal to Richard here. And let's print that out here. So as we can see, we go from, so we have the employee ID 1005. We have the default first name that got created here, which is John and Jane. And then we changed the first name. So now it is now equal to Richard, which is perfect. And our variable is still private. Uh, so we actually can't access the variable directly. It is actually fully accessed through this getter and setter method. Now there is one last thing that we can do, which is going to be a public int or actually public string last name. And then here we can actually do a get set very easily. So this we kind of do a little bit more. Um, it's a little long. Uh, because we specify we're going to be returning the first name, we're setting the first name uh, to the value. But what we can actually do is get and set just like that. And that will actually do the last name for us. Now I'm actually going to go ahead and run this and we will see what our output is. Uh, so let's actually go ahead and let's print out the last name. So we're going to say dot last name here so we're going to print it out to the console and then what we're also going to go ahead and do is we are going to go ahead and change it to smith let's do the semicolon here and let's run our application so here we can actually see we get 1005 for employee id still we get john and jane for our first name Last name is blank, uh, which is normal because we don't have anything set, but it is no longer our default value of Doe. Uh, so we actually do notice something is a little weird here. And the last name is actually still showing Doe. So the reason for that is when we use this public string last name was just the get set, it actually replaces the variable altogether. So now we have two variable calls called last names. So we actually have a member property, uh, which can be defined by the estimate of the little wrench here. And then we have our member variable, which is last name. So this is a member property. This is a member variable. So what we actually need to do now is the best way to do it would actually be to comment out or remove this last name doe here and now what we would do is change every reference of our last name here that had the lowercase l to an uppercase l. And actually in this method here, I'm just going to change everything to a this dot just for a little best practice here. So now if we actually do this here, so let's save this and we go back into our application. We will see that the last name is still blank at first, which is fine because we don't have a default value for that last name capitalized. And our last name now displays Smith here. Now, if we did want kind of like a default value, because we are creating the employee here with just an employee ID, we already know that. What we can do is we can say this dot last name equals go. And now if we actually run the application here, we will see that we now have Doe because that default value got assigned in the constructor. Now uh, you can use these, uh, you can use uh, this one as well. It is really 
up to your preference. Both of these are pretty um, valid. Uh, this one would let you do maybe some manipulation. Maybe you only want uh, names of certain lengths or you don't want names of certain lengths. Those are all things that you can definitely better specify in a custom get set compared to just using the C sharp get and set. So now if we actually did this for every single item here, let's just do the get here and let's so we're going to be replacing all of these with basic get sets because all of these properties that we're doing are all pretty basic. Um, so let's go ahead and let's remove this here. Now we actually have an issue. Once we actually have this, we can do a this dot employee ID equals employee ID, uh, this dot employee ID, this dot first name. And let's just do a this dot first name. We're going to make this John and Jane here as well. And of course, we have to change all of these to the capitalized versions. So once we actually have all of this set here, we hit run. We actually do get it all good here. And once again, we still cannot modify that employee ID even though we can actually set it through the constructor the employee id is still a read only now there would be a way that i would probably do uh doesn't really matter in this case um, but let's say you only wanted um things within this application within this class to be able to set it you could always have a private set here and this will let you privately be able to set the employee ID later on. So that is really the basics of getting and setting. So if you only want a read only variable, uh, you don't really need this private set. You could just do the get and that will make it a read only uh, variable. And at least this way, you can initialize it that way um, and that will work fine. And then after that, it is read only. Uh, you can only read it because you shouldn't really be changing the employee ID. Someone's first name can definitely change. Someone's last name can definitely change. An employee ID is usually something that is given to you once you start your employment and doesn't really change. Of course, if the company you are making this application for tells you that employee IDs can change, um, you would definitely be able to have a set on there. But that is pretty much the basics for the getters and setters. I hope I explained that clearly enough um, for you guys. So if you guys have any questions or comments, please let me know down below in the comment section and I will answer you guys directly. Or if it's something that I think a lot of people could benefit from, I will make another video maybe clarifying uh, some items here, but that should be good. Also be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button as well and hit that notification bell to be notified when that next video comes out. And I will see you guys on the next video.